Hey everyone, this is uh, my first uh, video about how to make a word prediction. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, easiest one, which is the Super Nintendo uh, with the donor card. Um, uh, you will need uh, an EPROM programmer. I'm going to use uh, the GQ4X, uh, which is pretty versatile. I can do a lot of uh, other projects with that, but you can use uh, a different one. I got a cheaper one like the um, TL866CS or all the Xeltec series. Um, you also need uh, an EPROM, uh, this one, which is um, the 27C800 one. Uh, it's mostly um, pin compatible with the uh, Nintendo Mask from. You also need, of course, uh, the donor card. I'm um, not really fond of using donor card, but um, some of them have uh, spe specific chips, uh, like uh, the Super FX or uh, in this case the DSP one. So there's not really. Um, um, replacement for them, so well, uh, you're pretty stuck uh, by uh, using a Mario game. So uh, every time I'm using uh, a Donna card, I'm uh, trying to use um, a Broken Shell or a heavily uh, yellow one like this one, uh, because what we really need is the PCB inside. Uh, so yeah, I have less regret to uh, using them. Uh, we're going to uh, replace the mask from here with the uh, original game by uh, the one we are going to program and of course uh, I will uh, replace the uh, battery because well uh, those ones uh, are uh, more than uh, 20 years old so let's prevent any leak and uh, uh, yeah I will use uh, one of the battery holders so I can replace the battery uh, very easily so I'm going to explain uh, how does it work, uh, how we're going to make the byte swap and all the uh, program you're going to use and how to use them. Before starting, you must be sure that the game you want to burn is compatible with your donor card. A quick way to know it is by checking in an emulator. You will need to know what kind of memory mapping the game needs, like high ROM or low ROM, if it needs an SRAM for saving, and if yes, the size of the SRAM. I won't talk much about the memory mapping stuff, but here's the hint how you can find a compatible donor card. This is not an universal rule, but it works in the majority of the case. Each PCB card has an info on it. It starts with the later SHVC or EA for Electronic Cards game, 4 digits, then 2 digits. The first digit is the number of the mask from the PCB supported. The second digit is the type of memory mapping the card is using. Most of the time it will be A for low ROM and G for high ROM. The third is the size of the SRAM. When you put it at the power of 2, you will have the size of the SRAM in kilobytes. So if you have 3, the card uses 8 kilobytes, meaning 64 kilobits. The fourth is the type of the memory mapper the card uses. This is mainly for the card with saving feature. The card can use logic chips such as the LS139 for saving or just an LS00 for handling two mask ROMs. It can also use the Mad Mapper, which was developed by Nintendo to handle in a single chip saving and multiple mask ROM. The two last digits are the revision of the board. The bigger, the more recent. Sometimes, recent boards support 36 pins EPROM when early Earlier revisions only support 32 pins EPROM. So if you have a donor card with the info SHVC2A3B and let's say 11, that means your donor card supports a low ROM game with 2 EPROM, 60 kilobits of SRAM, and use a LS139 as a memory mapper. This is also mean that the revision of the board is pretty recent. On the other way, if you want to make a reproduction of Fura in a Shiren, you will see that the game is a 30 megabits high ROM with a 256 kilobit of SRAM with no specific chip. You still have the possibility of hacking a bit your donor card to make it fit your needs, such as a bigger RAM. Of course, if your game needs a specific chip, such as a Super FX or a DSP, this number will be different. But you got the idea. Now, let's see how to prepare our EPROM. This is a classic 8 megabit 27C801 we are going to use. And this is an original Nintendo 8 megabit 32 pins ROM which contains a game or a part of the game. If you compare the pinout of each one, you will see that they are pretty close to each other, except for some pins. Pins 1, 2, 24, 30, and 31. To make your reproduction, you can just wire each pins manually. 
but you will have a bunch of wires to slot in a tiny space. There's a more elegant way to do it, and it's with the bike swap. The memory in an EEPROM is accessible per region, and by so can be seen as blocks. Byte swapping will copy a memory block in the file ROM, then replace it with another one. In our case, the program we will use will swap the memory blocks between the A17 and A19, and between the A18 and A16. Then why not swapping between the A16 and OE? Well, OE stands for Output Enable, and as its name indicates, it controls the output of the EEPROM. It's physically different from the memory address and cannot be swapped, so you still have two wires to do manually. To make a clean byte swap, you need to prepare your ROM file. If not, the swap can bug since it will be pointing to a part of the ROM after the end of the file. You need to expand it to match the size of the EEPROM you will use. It's also possible that your ROM file have additional info inside. Those info were added when the dump of the game was done, and that was to make the dump compatible with emulator. Those info are stuck in the header of the file and need to be removed before byte swapping. To expand the ROM, we will use Lunar Expand. To byte swap and remove the header, we will use SNES ROM Utility. So those are the steps. First, you expand your ROM file at the side of the EEPROM you want to use. Then, you are byte swapping your file and remove the header, if there's one. You burn the EEPROM and you solder it after, of course, removing the old mask rod. And finally, you just swap the output enable in the A16. Of course, we are doing a single EEPROM. If the game needs multiple EEPROMs, after expanding the ROM file, SNES ROM utility allows you to split and make the byte swap at the same time. First, let's see how to expand our ROM. In our case, we are going to expand to 8 megabits. And we are going to apply our Apple Street card as you can see, it's less than 1 megabyte. And if we check, as you can see, now it's 1 megabyte. So let's go by swap that. So let's prepare our EEPROM. It's 1 megabyte, 8 megabit. NTSC, we don't have to remove the header. And there's no in the header in our uh, file so we can patch the ROM it's not the case we can split the ROM if you have two uh, megabytes um, EEPROM and you want to split that you can choose split and here we can swap the bin and you can choose which size uh, we, we need so at this time it's uh, the 27C801 uh, so let's check the output as you can see there's a new file and we have to rename to be sure we're not going to uh, mix it with the uh, other one. So uh, to program uh, on the uh, GQ4X uh, you need to uh, set the device to uh, 27C801. I'm going to uh, make an automatic process with the ID check, the blank check to see if the EEPROM is really uh, blank, write and verify. So let's check first our uh, EEPROM, well the file we are going to uh, put and then just press the auto batch and this will program our EEPROM. There you go, so now let's take it and uh, put it on the card.
So I just put uh, our freshly uh, new cartridge. Let's test if it's working. Yeah. So now. Let's put it in a real cartridge and uh, clean up for last time. <laughs> 